Hi friends, Apex Legends first ever crossover event with Final Fantasy is here and I'm going to show you how to get the awesome Buster Sword heirloom, how to get the event currency for the free reward store and how to use the new material hop ups and Buster Sword event items in game. A big thank you to EA for sponsoring this video and allowing me to show you what might just be the best event we've had so far in Apex Legends. Okay, so let me start with the one you all want to hear about, the R5 Buster Sword heirloom which essentially is the newest heirloom in Apex Legends, but it's not quite the same as your typical heirloom that we've had previously. It is classed as a mythic melee cosmetic, and it fits in place of your current heirloom or fists. One thing I should say is, you might come across this sword in-game when you play PUDs during the event. Picking that up doesn't automatically give you the heirloom. That's an in-game item which I'll explain a little bit later in this video. The heirloom itself is kind of like that sword, but it's something you'll get to keep after the event, and it doesn't give you any of the benefits you get from using it in game if you find that version in the game. Oh also you should know the R5 Buster Sword won't go into the Mythic Store after this event, so essentially if you want this heirloom, now's the time to get it. So what's the cheapest way to get the heirloom, and how can you get your hands on it? Technically there are two ways to get the heirloom, you can earn it for free, which is I'm pretty sure the first time we've ever been able to get an heirloom for free during an actual event. The reason you can get it for free is because every event pack gives you a chance to get the heirloom, similar to how normal apex packs can give you heirloom shards in any pack. You will see though that the odds of getting that are less than 1%, which means honestly you've just got to be really really lucky. And the reason I say you can get it for free, for one, they're giving you a free pack to start with, so everyone that logs into the game will get one free event pack, and that's a given, you don't even have to do anything for that. I understand they will be adding event packs to the free reward store as well, so I'll explain the reward store in just a bit, so you can see if they do come to the reward store how you can earn those. And essentially between that, it will give you a chance to potentially get the heirloom for free. However, like I said, those odds are pretty low so don't just depend on that. The other way of course is the guaranteed way to get the heirloom, but this does require you buying event packs. There are 36 event items which include 6 iconic skins. It is slightly different in this event though, you can't craft individual skins, and you can't buy individual skins either, apart from the 6 iconic skins which you can buy individually in the store. However, if you're trying to get the heirloom and to get all 36 event items, honestly I don't recommend getting the individual iconic skins, it's going to cost you way more. In fact, it's going to cost you double the price. Which means the only way to get your 36 event items are by buying 36 event packs. Now as I said you get the first one for free, so technically that means you need to buy 35 event packs. You can either buy one pack at a time individually, or you can buy four packs together. In the four packs, you don't save any Apex coins or any money, but you do get a guaranteed legendary or iconic skin from the event. One other thing is, as you open the packs, you'll see a milestone tracker, and as you get through the packs you'll progress through those milestones, which essentially give you free rewards, and the top reward is a mythic death box, which is the first time we've had a custom death box in the game, and this one's quite cool, it actually appears on every enemy you kill, so rather than there just being a normal death box on the enemy, you get a really cool flashy death box. So how much does it cost and what's the cheapest way? Well I have done the maths for you as normal, so I can show you how much it will cost you to get all 36 items and give you a little bit of advice on how to save a bit of money. So I've put together this table as normal, and you can see all the crafting costs and the total costs here. But let me just explain how the pricing works before I talk through the table. If you look at this, you can see they actually give you discounts based on how many items you own. So your first pack is free, the second pack is going to cost you 100 Apex coins, which to be honest for an event pack is a pretty good deal. However after that, if you own 2 to 6 items, it's going to cost you 500 Apex coins. If you then own 7 to 15 items, it'll cost you 700 Apex coins per pack. And if you then own 16 to 25 items, it's going to cost you 1000 Apex coins per pack. Also you'll notice there you can craft the packs, for 1650 crafting metals. So if we go back to the table I've created, I've done my best to try and make it as easy as possible for you. You can see in the far left column how many crafting metals you would need. If you then look in the column next to it, column B, you can see how many items that will unlock for you. Then in the column next to that, column C, that shows you how many items it leaves you left to buy. 
And in the column just to the right of that, you can see how many Apex coins that would equate to. And finally, you can then see how much that would cost you in terms of the coin bundles you'd need to buy. And I've given you the value there with EA Play and also without EA Play. The cheapest way to do it is really buy the packs first so you can get those discounts. Once you get through that lot, then you can start using your crafting metals because 1,650 crafting metals versus 1,000 Apex coins, it works out better value to use your crafting metals if you can. And ultimately, you can see at the very top there, what that means is the cost to get the heirloom and the mythic death box comes to about $250, just slightly under without EA Play. Obviously, that's a lot more expensive than most of the previous collection events we've had. However, in this event, I guess you do get two heirlooms in a way. You get that universal heirloom, which is the first universal heirloom we've ever had. Plus, you get that mythic death box. So it really just comes down to, are you a Final Fantasy fan? Do you like the look of the heirloom? And does that idea of the death box sound really cool to you? If the answer is yes to all three of those, and you've got enough money and you can afford it, then this is probably a good event for you. But if you don't have loads of money, then just be a little bit wary. I always try and give you the facts in terms of how much things cost in the game. So just use this information as wisely as you can. And there you have it. Those are the two ways to get the new Buster Sword. Next, let's look at the event reward store. And we can look at the event currency first. The event currency itself is called Gil. And to collect it, like normal, you'll need to complete daily challenges. If you go to the challenges tab, you can just keep track of what the challenges are each day. The more challenges you do, the more Gil you'll earn, which is the event currency. And therefore, the more free event packs you can get. So that's the free reward store. Let's finish by talking about the game mode itself because we know Final Fantasy is taking over the normal Apex Legends pubs games. The core aim of the game mode is essentially the same as a normal Apex Legends Battle Royale, in that you're still trying to be the last squad to survive. However, the Final Fantasy takeover switches up the gameplay just a little bit, with two really cool Final Fantasy themed elements. First, we've got five types of materia hop-ups that are now in the game. Each of these hop-ups have their own colour, and based on which materia you pick up, they'll give you different abilities. With the blue materia, when you deal damage to enemies, it lets you heal yourself, which is super useful. The green materia, when you reload with this equipped, you'll emit a shock nova that damages and slows nearby enemies. It's kind of like a mini arc star in terms of the effect, although it doesn't deal anywhere near as much damage as an arc star. With the purple materia, random critical hits, i.e. headshots, give extra damage. With the red materia, this summons a companion Nessie to attack enemies. I think this is one of my favourite ones. Finally, there's the yellow materia. When you damage enemies, you can see their remaining health. In terms of how to find these cool new materia hop-ups, they're actually quite easy to find. You can get them as normal loot around the map, and specifically if you look for these cactus coloured loot ticks, that's the easy way to guarantee yourself one of these really cool hop-ups. To go with these really cool limited hop-ups, you also have the R2 R5 Buster Sword. Now this is the one I mentioned looks exactly the same as the heirloom, however this one is event specific, and it's going to give you some really cool abilities. The kind of abilities we've never really had in Apex Legends before with a weapon. Now these abilities include giving you access to light and heavy attacks. You also have a dash ability with the sword, which you can use with the normal button you'd use to ADS when you have a weapon. You can even deflect shots with the sword. This reduces the damage you take, but it doesn't stop any damage completely. It is quite cool, it's almost like you've got a lightsaber in your hand. Now performing any of these actions, you'll notice start filling up the meter on your screen, and that meter once full, lets you unleash a really cool limit break attack. So it's definitely worth performing these actions and using the sword, because then you get that really cool attack. Now the best way to find these swords is in care packages, however you can also find them as normal loot around the map. And there you have it, that's how the new Final Fantasy game mode takeover works. I actually really like what they've done, they haven't changed it completely, but they've introduced a cool new gameplay aspect that does make you feel a little bit different in a normal game. One last thing, they do have Twitch drops for this event. You can check out these stickers on these dates by finding any streamer with drops enabled and you'll be able to get these cool Twitch drops. Anyways, hopefully you have fun in this new Apex Legends Cross Final Fantasy event. Honestly, even if you've not played Apex for a little while, it's definitely worth jumping back on to give this a try because there's some really cool stuff in this event. Feel free to ask any questions you've got in the comments. For now though, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you later.